Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury Three Three with another exhibition match. This time, Clone and Lowry on Alien Desert. So, before we go in the game, let's just go over the map a bit. So, this is a map a bit more standardized than Tombstone Desert. There are a lot of deserts in this. Anyway, a bit more standardized. Every metal extractor is two point three five metal. A lot of metal concentrated in the center. Though typically the way it plays out is you get these four metal extractors quite quickly, although this is a actually difficult area to defend a bit. Like this hill here tends to make it rather difficult to defend these metal extractors, just the position of it. It's easy to get hit from behind, so being careful around that is important. And usually players will go over to the north and to the south. With a bit of focus here, usually though the focus ends up being in these center mexes because there are a lot of them and they are in the path directly between the players. But it, Oftentimes I see players play and they'll be able to take these mexes over here or these mexes over here with impunity. I mean, the center, that goes back and forth, but the rest of the mexes are pretty much guaranteed one way or the other. I mean, they can be contested, but they usually aren't. Anyway, so this also is a map that's very flat. As a result, vehicle factories are typically what's used here. Very rarely do you see bots in this map, occasionally, but rarely. So, without further ado, let's begin. Clone going for an air start. Rather interesting, while Lowry on the other hand going for light vehicles, a bit more typical, though Air Start is decently popular in 1v1 games. Point that out, in 1v1 games recently it's not it's not as popular as in 2v2, although even in 2v2 it's not as popular as was expected. But yeah, Air Start with a crane, very quick economic start. On the other hand we have Lowry going for a dart based start. Very quick scouting, they had a couple Scorchers in their queue, okay there we go, switching back to Scorchers. They want to get a very aggressive start in and want to raid as quickly as possible. Like I said, on this map, it's fairly easy to raid around the back here. You do have this area here, which does have the defender on top. But overall, it's kind of tough because of the way line of sight works to be able to see both what's going on here and what's going on back here. It's hard to tell right now because there is enough line of sight on both sides. But still, like the defender is providing line of sight. But if you look over... Oh, this has also got radar providing line of sight. So it's hard to really demonstrate. But... If the one for the defender, it would be easy to have no line of sight. So at this point, Lowry well of where was being built. I don't see any changes yet. No defenders being built. No scorchers, sorry, no slashers or crashers being built to deal with the air start. And Lowry, well, takes out a metal extractor for free. Nothing stopping them. Clones commander not dealing with it, surprisingly enough. Really not sure why that commander did not do much of anything, but yes. Lowry trying to get some shots in. Scorcher to be able to tank some of the shots in the defender. And gets rid of yet another metal extractor. Clone losing two metal extractors here right off the bat. I mean, at this point, Clone just has the commander for metal. And it looks like... Wait, how... no, they have more than just the commander. They have metal extractors over in the southeast side of the map. The crane, not a bad choice in the start because it does allow for building outside of the main base. And Clone trying to get rid of the Scorcher. The Scorcher will go down, not even trying to dodge at this point. I'm not going to get rid of this crane. But at the same time, that has been totally revealed, and Lowry not reacting. Surprisingly enough, Lowry sticking to the Scorchers. I'm not really sure how that would work. I mean, Scorchers can't easily hit the air that much, so I just, just why not use Slashers or Crashers? Crashers in particular, like Crasher, Scorcher, that can work decently well. Over... Yeah, see, the shots barely hit, and they certainly don't hit close enough that the heat rays can really take advantage of their close damage property. The so clone right now getting kind of ahead. Lowry not really expanding that much, and clone expanding quite a lot, and clone of course going for the air start as mentioned before. You want with an air start, you want to rapid expand to just deal with that. Deal with it faster than your opponent can. But that's not happening. Clone is the one doing the rapid expansion, and Lowry still staying inside their base rather defensively. Actually, they haven't really built a whole lot to expand with. They're just leaving their commander in their base. Rather odd thing to do. I, I don't... Lowry appears to be a little bit rusty from the looks of it, just given how they've been not moving around as much as I would expect them to. Like, jumping around the camera, selecting stuff as it's going on, reacting as quickly as they could be. And there are crashes being built, but it's a couple minutes later than I would have expected. Yeah, more darts might be interesting. I... Yeah, there aren't a lot of static defenses in the main base. Darts could actually do a decent amount of damage. In this area, no. They die immediately. But in the northeast, yeah, until this lotus comes up. Well, it has come up now. But prior to that lotus, darts would have been fairly useful.
And there are more darts being built. Okay, that's... There we go. Skazi, your wish has been granted. Lowry has built more darts. Although, Lowry's also watching, so yeah. Lowry, you built more darts. Ah, uh, fair enough. Yeah, if you're on, even if you're unaware of the expansion, though, it's still air start. I don't know. For, I've just... I've just seen it as being the reaction. When you see an air start, expand quickly. Put a few defenses here and there just to get rid of any ravens that are stray and running around. But expand quickly and repeatedly. As necessary. Because ultimately they'll go for the ground switch, and then when they go for the ground switch, you've got to deal with the fact that if your economy isn't that big, you can't easily switch over from anti-air units to anti-ground units. Five darts going over to the north southeast are all gonna die! They're gonna die horrible, horrible deaths, but we'll see what happens. They do spot it out, though. That's the important thing. They do see what's going on, and only one of them dies. They do not engage, which is good. Lowry is paying attention to that. So Lowry apparently shaking off a bit of the rust here. I'm not sure if they were rusty or not, but it's just... Yeah, the multitasking is less than I... I Lowry has pretty good multitasking. That's why I'm surprised. Like, Lowry's multitasking is actually quite impressive. So I was a little bit surprised that they weren't reacting as well as I have come to expect them to. But that was definitely more what I was thinking of. That's definitely more on the ball. That's that's more Lowry. That's the Lowry I know. So if they were rusty, they they're shaking off that rust. Anyway, Clon is sorry. That's not Clon. It's Lowry. Lowry getting up a few more crashers, setting a couple of them up to be mobile like outside of the base. I mean, but mostly focusing on just having a massive amount of darts and does scout the ground switch. Scouts out the heavy tank switch. How do they deal with that? Well. Levelers and Ravagers are a good way of dealing with it, but I don't know if they're going to actually go for that. The Crashes, however, nicely set up to deal with these rare units. And they, I mean, Lowry, sorry, Clone knows, sorry, Lowry knows exactly where Clone's forces are. They do have radar, they do have line of sight over this. So they do see the Ravens and get rid of a couple of them, too. At this stage in the game, that's a very nice kill. And the Ravens just avoid this. Still, Lowry not expanding as much as, like I said, they are expanding to the center. They aren't expanding to the north that much. Overall, though, it's actually still working out for Lowry. They're still economically ahead. Clone has not expanded that quickly either. Despite the fact that they do have a crane, they have not been pushing forward that quickly. They haven't been expanding around this entire south side of the map. The area I said that kind of doesn't get contested. It really doesn't. It's rather surprising, but rarely do you see this get contested. And the crane is going to be going for it sooner rather than later, but still, a couple minutes ago, wouldn't have been surprising. I mean, if if they expect Lowry is going to be offensive, then I guess that wasn't a bad idea. If they expect Lowry is going to expand, though, they'll want to out-expand. Like, Cone will want to out-expand. But Lowry has expanded. They are expanding a decent amount. Maybe they didn't at first, but they have now. They've gotten a lot of metal extractors now, and they've gotten a decent amount of defenses, too. Getting rid of all of these ravens. Wow, that just... Yet another Raven goes down. These Crashers are becoming a right pain in the butt for these Ravens. They should be able to take out one. This one should go down. Yep. The one over here is still alive, but that's one. There's another one in production, but that is it. I'm sorry, there's just the one. Just the one. There's only one Raven left. And the tank switch is complete. The Heavy Tank Factory is starting to build that first Kodachi. So, Lowry is going to have to switch over. But they have. They've all, they knew about it. They've already called it. They knew the timing as well. They've got the levelers up, which is exactly the right timing. So his air switch is being shut down pretty heavily. I mean, Lowry didn't maybe didn't expand as much as they could have, but they expanded enough. They're still ahead by 10, plus 10 metal. There was only one expansion from Clone, as opposed to this entire west side of the map, like, center to west side of the map by Lowry. Like, all the spots in the map that are taken by Lowry, that's, that's a lot of the map. Oops, I don't know what I want to do. This is what I want to do. Wrong F key. Lowry right now, way ahead. Just let's deal with these Kodachis here and there, and eventually the Panthers as well when they come up. Although, at this point, Clone going purely for Kodachi. A little bit surprising, but that's not a terrible idea, especially against all the darts. Definitely a good plan against the darts. Against the Scorchers, it's also a good plan, unless they're really clever about spacing themselves. They go around in this nice circle, really space themselves out. So only one of them dies to every Kodachi blow. That's... That's going to be cost-effective, although not by much, actually. Kodachis aren't much more expensive than Scorchers. The Levelers, on the other hand, they are going to be very good for this purpose. 
if they can catch up. That's the only thing. They need to kind of bait out the Kodachis so the Kodachis get out of position and then the levelers can deal with them. That will need to happen. And more Kodachis coming along, going pretty much on infinite Kodachi. Oh, Kodachi Reaper actually, just added Reaper into the queue. Which is exactly where the levelers and Raptors are going to be extremely useful. Although, to be fair, it's actually pretty handy. Yeah, losing a Comfort Air Start is pretty horrible. I missed the thing that Lowry mentioned. That's true. Okay, I should probably point out, Lauro was mentioning something about the commander. The commander dying to an air star is a big deal, and yes, it is. The mass expansion idea is typically pushed with workers. Not so much with the commander. The commander should be defending themselves, but with regular workers, just send them out. And yeah, they'll die, and yeah, the mechs will die. You just keep sending them out, and at least that way, you aren't being kept, you aren't being hemmed in too much. Still, as Kodachi's after the air switch are taking advantage of the fact that the workers are out of position and tearing them to shreds. That being said, Clone still hasn't expanded much. They still don't have... They lost their crane. They have a welder over to the north side of the map. And that's about it. And the levelers are in position. Trying to take care of... Wow, well, actually doing a decent job against the Raven. Trying to take care of the Rab, the Reaper. They should be able to dodge shots if they're micro nicely enough. But it's kind of tricky. It's tricky for Beagles to dodge Reaper shots. You can do it with bots pretty well. It's actually kind of fun to play with bots. It's a fun little game to play with bots is dodge the Reaper shots. You just time it out. It's a four second reload time. You just count it up and then move the bot right out of the way right at the last second so the shots miss them. You can deal a lot of damage with a few well micro bots that way. Anyway, the Scorchers trying to get rid of the Kodachis. A little bit tricky though. They have spaced themselves out quite well, but even then there were enough Kodachis to deal with them. Still good kiting. Keeping the Kodachis out of range. And forcing the Kodachis back, getting in between the getting in between the Kodachis and the base. This is always a good thing to do. You always want to make sure that if you want to catch out your opponent to follow you, I mean, admittedly, that wasn't a whole lot of pressure. It was stopped pretty easily. But if you can put pressure on their base, put your units between their units and their base, they have to pull their units in and advance on you. They can't retreat against you. And remember, in 0k, retreat micro is key. Uh, the units that retreat tend to have the advantage. It's a little bit weird and slightly counterintuitive if you're thinking from realistic military strategy, but yeah, retreating is an advantageous situation because of the way that projectile kiting works. Basically, because there's no momentum, or rather no conservation of momentum, units that are retreating get a, essentially a range advantage compared to their position. Whereas units that are advancing have a slight range disadvantage. In effect. It don't, it's not, no will change to range, but it's just the projectile stays flying in the air and it's not the speed of the projectile isn't reduced by the units retreating. Or, not as much speed, but I mean the the velocity doesn't carry with the unit. So the range is effectively longer. Like, the bullet's hanging towards, and the other units are running into the bullets. So if you can avoid advancing, that's great. If you can force your opponent to advance on you, then you end up in the lead. I just want to note that Lowry has also gone for an air switch. Primarily for Swifts. Going to be getting some Ravens of their own, however. Getting rid of... I think they're going to get rid of all the Ravens here. Yes, they've gotten rid of... Well, they got rid of two. Not sure about all of them, but they're not boosting out at this point. They're still fairly confident. They, and that was that was good. They didn't boost. They didn't need to boost. That would have been a waste to boost right then. However, Reapers are coming in. Clone trying to reassert their control over the side of the map here. And at this point, it's fairly even. Lowry still has more of the map, but in terms of space... Well, actually, yeah, it's this area here. Well, this area here and this area here are clones. Okay, yeah, Lowry's still way ahead. Lowry taking out more and more metal extractors. Or taking taking control of more and more metal extractors. Plus 50 to plus 30. At this point, the military advantage isn't that big, and Lowry hitting a bit of a hump. They do need to have a few more... Well, a few more power plants. That's the thing they need. And they are getting a fusion plant, which will solve the problem for the rest of the game. That being said, though... No one just had... Like, their main army's cost is the Reapers. That's a quarter of their army right there. In terms of cost, in terms of the metal here, actually, more than a quarter is about a half their army. And, I'm sorry, well, now it's closer to a quarter of their army. Oh, no, not quite. Is that Reaper dead yet? That Reaper is not dead yet. Now the Reaper's dead. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's still a big blow. That is still a very big blow to lose that Reaper. They need all the Reapers they can get. And they are building more Reapers, but they're also fairly open. Pretty much anytime they want 
Lowry could send in these levelers, as they are right now, to the southeast side of the map, destroy these metal extractors, destroy the Kodachis. Either force a defense or force an assault. And this area is pretty well defended with Stardust, so there's not really a whole lot of angles that Glowin can assault from. Lowry basically has this area covered. This this section right here is probably the weakest. There's only a couple Lotuses, like this right here. There's a couple Lotuses and a couple Defenders, and that's about it. So the Reapers running through here would have the easiest time. Not sure if Glowin's going to take advantage of that. At this point, though... This entire south side has been destroyed. And this would have been great... Okay, I was about to say, this would be a great place to bait Swifts into. Or rather, bait the bait the Ravens into so the Swifts could come in and kill. But the Swifts were not pushed forward to take advantage of that. There actually aren't very many Swifts belonging to Lowry. There are a lot of Ravens, though, and they are going to be used to help get rid of these ra these Reapers. And the southeast also being destroyed. The southeast has been completely wiped out. And these Reapers are about to be killed. One of them does go down. The second one... Well... Gonna get targeted probably, but doesn't matter. Clone throws in the towel. Lowry really played that air start well. Played against the air start well. I still think they could have expanded a bit more, but in this case it worked out because Clone did not expand pretty much beyond this one expansion to the southeast. Everything else worked out. And yes, guys, I say for the rest of the game, because if this fusion reactor is destroyed, I mean, look at the position of the fusion reactor. If it gets killed, Lowry is basically out of the game. It's for the rest of the game because it's either it stays alive and you win, or it gets destroyed and you lose. That's a little bit extreme, but roughly speaking, yeah, it's... It's gonna explode, it's gonna ruin a bunch of these caretakers, and if your opponent can get this far that they could actually get rid of the fusion reactor, except maybe with size, but those weren't on... These, those are not on the table. Those were not on the board. So other than size, the fusion reactor, if it dies, it's because everything else is also dying. <laughs> So, that's what I mean. Rest of the game because you either win with it or lose with it. Gazi, this isn't a 10v10. It's not going to go on for that long. Anyway, on to the next game, which is going to be... Oh, don't be so disappointed. You know it's not a 10v10. Anyway, on to the next game, which is going to be Randy and Clone on Tartarus. Clone actually requested this specifically, and I figured, yeah, it's a decently long game. There's a couple other games that have been requested as well, which I will probably do at a later date. And I don't really want to go into why I don't want to do them right now, but let's just say that this one, because it's Clone doing it, I'm okay with doing this, because Clone is the one who requested it specifically. So I will be back with that in just a moment. Stay tuned. Won't be long. <laughs> 